there is a tremendous amount of evidence that suggests there were certainly um, uh, a high degree of knowledge and some uh, system of understanding that existed well and truly before our current definition of history was ever there. Like we just have these these echoes of the past uh, and of these things that come down through all these cultures around the world. They come down through us through ancient maps. They come down through us through architecture. But you know, they even come down through us in through to us in ancient religions and stories. And even our modern religions have some of these details encompassed in them. Things like celestial knowledge understanding of the heavens, of the the motion of the earth and of the planets. Uh, these things are encoded into religions and cultures, where, even in some cases where those cultures themselves had no way of knowing this. Um, there's a good book, uh, it's called uh, Hamlet's Mill, that kind of explores this topic. And it shows that there's a, there's a correlation in the same set of sort of astronomical data on things like the precession of the equinoxes, which is a 26,000-year cycle that, this, that, that yeah. we go through about what- The wobble. What, yeah, right. It's it's like well, it's it's not quite the same. The wobble is the the uh, the obliquity of the of the ecliptic. It's like the angle of the Earth that changes. Precession of the equinoxes is, is, you know, what 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 um, what what constellation the sun uh, rises behind. Like it all rises in during the, uh, the, the spring um, during that twenty seven year period. Or is it 26,000 year cycle, 26 and a half. It actually varies because the 26,000 yes. year period. Yeah. So right now we're in the age of Pisces. So on, on the, on the, um, I believe it's the, 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 uh, the, uh, spring, um, equinox or it might be the solstice. I should know. Uh, it's, it's like, we look at what, what, what constellations behind the sun when the sun rises in the, on that day. And right now we're in the house of Pisces. So it lasts about 2,600 years. Um, thereabouts is the age of Pisces. They vary a little because the constellations are a little different in size and scope. Uh, it's kind of really interesting because that and that data is in a lot of ways encoded into our own uh, religions the uh, and the religions of the book that we use today. It's kind of like the Pisces, the Jesus fish that people put on their cars. Uh, Jesus, you know, he was a he 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 has. There's a lot of allegories. He fed people with fish. He's some of his disciples were fishermen. Um, the age before Pisces was the age of Aries, the ram, which started at about year zero. So Jesus kind of came in right when we, when we transitioned into the age of Pisces. And if you go back through like the, the religions of the book, I mean, you, your, your representation or your primary figure is Moses and Moses blew the ram's horn. You know, he was a, a Jew. So he's kind of representative of the age of, of Aries, the ram. And before Moses and before that, that was about till about 2000 BC. And before that, we were in the astronomical age of Taurus the bull. So one of the stories in the Bible of, of Moses coming down from Mount Sinai uh, with, the, with the Ten Commandments, he finds his worshippers, um, you know, he finds his people worshipping a golden calf. And then they smash the calf up. He actually kills a bunch of them, but they, they smash it up and grind it into dust. And it's kind of this significance of like the transition between the age of Taurus uh, into the age of Aries. It's kind of encoded into our religion. I always laugh. It's funny to see the, G the Jesus fish on people's cars. It's like you're you're acknowledging the astronomical age that we're in. And after the age of, you know, it comes next, right? After the age of Pisces, there's even a song about it. Leo? Age of Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. The age of Aquarius. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And in the Bible, and when when Jesus is uh, the, the final, the last supper, when he's going into Passover, they his followers ask him like where – what will we do without you, Lord? And he said, we'll go into town, find the man bearing a pitcher of water, follow him to his house, and there you will find sustenance. So it's basically a message saying, like, find the guy bearing a pitcher of water and follow him to his house. Like, we're going into the house or the you know, the house of Aquarius, the, oh, okay. the, the age of Aquarius oh, after okay. Jesus. So it's, yeah, so it's these things are encoded in there. And there's, and there's more specific knowledge in the in Viking traditions, in, in all sorts of ancient religions that have to do with, like, celestial Signif celestially significant numbers, 72, and all of these numbers that are associated with procession turn up in all of these religions from all around the world, even when such cultures don't have the ability to make those observations themselves. So the idea being that that all of this came from a, 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 seeded, a seed point. Like, So if there was, go with the theory that there was some sort of um, globally advanced civilization that understood the mechanics of the heavens and of the earth in great detail, and then that stuff was then disseminated into all of these these disparate cultures after cataclysm, and they were put into these um, tales and stories, and things were deified because that's how we do oral traditions, right? We don't just say, "Oh, there's 
it takes 72 years for the sun to move one degree on the horizon. It's like, no, it's put into a tale and a story and it's, it has personalities and gods and stuff built up mm-hmm. around it. And that's how we pass information down through time in oral traditions. But this, it keeps cropping up across, across all these disparate cultures and religions. So it all seems to point back to this idea that there was a, like a seed culture, like there was a, a, something that put this data in there in the first place. Some, someone understood all of this. And in order to understand it, you need to have a high degree of technology um, and, and, you know, just grasp of like the motions of the heavens and the motions of the earth. We see that the same thing applies with longitude and ancient maps. Like there's really accurate maps of things like the coastline of Antarctica um, before there was ice on top of it that shows up in ancient maps that have been cobbled together from even more ancient maps right. that, that have been lost to us because of all these fires in like the Library of Alexandria and other places. Um, they show things like accurate longitude, which is a big problem, like the east-west measurement. We were always good at measuring north-south using the sun. East-west was a problem right up until about the year 1800 when we developed chronometers or watches that were accurate enough to enable us to do it. It was around the time of James Cook's second voyage of discovery we could develop and actually start to measure longitude, yet longitude and accurate longitude measurements show up on these ancient maps and they show up in structures like the Great Pyramid. Uh, it's, and, and the only way you can explain that is through te- technology. Like we don't, there's no other way to make those measurements and do them that accurately unless you have significantly advanced technology to at least the level of where we were in the 1800s, uh, if not more than that, it seems like, because... It's one of the things that really blows my mind about all of this stuff is this is that most of these mysteries that we're seeing now, like the engineering stuff, these ancient maps, we only realized they were mystery mysteries by the time we got into the 1800s. Like it, it's it took us it took us so long to develop our technology and our species to really only like 100, 150 years ago, where we could actually look at stuff and go, Oh, this is this is a challenge. Like this is a problem. We we developed our industrial base to the point where we can understand the engineering difficulties in this only 150 years ago. So right. you know what I mean? Like we we it's we've only recently developed our capability enough to the point where we can look at this stuff and say, oh, it's a mystery. So there has to have been something else going on back in the past because this stuff, it doesn't happen by accident. <laughs>